definitely recommend that and I'll link it in the description. So now if we create an orient, so an orient is something that automatically will be recognized by Houdini. Uh, we'll go Quaternion of the matrix. Okay, so that's going to orient these now in a way that I'll show you in a second. We'll be able to rotate them. Okay, now before we create those rotations, let's make a random value between uh, minus 1 and 1. So float R, which will be at random, as uh, fit rand at ptnum times whatever number here, just to give it some randomization. Uh, from 0 to 1, 2 minus 1 to 1. You can also do a fit 01, and these two arguments won't need to be filled if you do that. Um, so that's just creating a random value between these two values. Then between um, creating the matrix and the orient, let's go rotate M um, and then radians. So this is creating a, a, a slider here. So um, channel rotate X multiply by the random so that for each uh, point it's going to rotate differently it's not just a uniform value that they're all rotating by and then X which is the axis that it's going to rotate around so I click this I'm just missing a brace over here which is fine and if I rotate this now they will all rotate in one axis a random amount uh, based on this. So it's a random amount that's multiplied by this value. And then we'll just copy this for each of the other ones. And we can just change the axes and the names Y and Z and then create those set it to something like this and that'll give a nice bit of sort of randomization but also the the gist is that they're just being altered from their original orientations but not a huge amount so that sort of tends to help with the fluffy look quite a bit and then let's color those nodes again just so we know what we've altered save the project now after this copy to points we need to um, create some normals that are representative of the shape of the tree to transfer to the leaves so we'll do a similar technique to before or the exact same technique with the bounding and the remashing so bound remesh ray this back to its, uh, itself um, minimum distance again smooth 100 1 normal attribute transfer now let's transfer the normals back as points and N. and I find it quicker to actually transfer the the normals as a point attribute and then promote it back instead of creating it as a vertex attribute because then you're doing like around four times the amount of uh, computation. Because if I were to just create this as a vertex attribute, it would slow down the, um, the cook time significantly because it's creating a normal uh, a value for every vertex instead of every point. And as you can see, the vertices compared to points is significantly more. And uh, that transferring just takes a lot longer.
So once it's transferred, you'll see that the, uh, the normals have been softened. It's sort of not as easy to tell in Houdini as it is on Unreal, but you can see compared to before, um, the normals are sort of much smoother and it's based on the general shape of the tree, which sort of just makes it light a lot nicer inside Unreal. That's pretty much the guts of the setup. We'll be doing a few more things and setting up some parameters and the level of details, but that's uh, that's the most complex stuff out of the way. So let's go up here, create some normals for the trunk and branches, just so that when we merge it actually has them. And one thing I want to do is a polyfill as well. And I'll also move this attribute delete right down here because it's deleting every attribute and we need them for something. So I'll go polyfill, single polygon, and that will just fill this little thing here. So as well as whatever's inside here. I like to just keep it uh, closed. Now let's also, just before this polyfill, um, just up here, we'll go blast. And what we'll do is, you see it's quite a lot of geometry here. We don't actually need these really small branches. They won't be visible in game. There'll be, um, you know, leaves covering them up. It's sort of pointless to have them. And they increase the poly count uh, significantly. So let's just blast this. We'll go, go up here. So the growth generations um, are saved as something called a loop count on uh, the branches as they're created. So in here you've got, you'll have an attribute, um, point, count, uh, point attribute called loop count, which is just sort of tied to the, uh, the amount of iterations, which is driven by the grow gen on the top level. So if we copy this parameter grow gen, and then we just want to come to the blast here. Let's visualize again. And we'll go at loop count. So that was the attribute we were just looking at. Equals and then paste relative references from that grow gen. And set this to points because it's a point attribute. And what that will do, let me just turn off this template here it will delete just the last um, loop count and significantly save on the amount of polys, which obviously matters. Now let's create a switch here and this will be for the LOD levels. So right now we're making LOD 0, which will be you know the highest detail. Um, but let's set a blast and we'll use that same technique to delete the previous grow gen as well. So when you're far enough away, you'll see uh, even less of the smaller branches. So let's take this in the switch. Uh, let's just copy this here. It's the easiest way. and then just subtract one here. So this will delete even further. Ah oh, yeah, it's gotta be points of course. There we go. So at a certain LOD level, um, in my case, I'm, it's from LOD one onwards, I'm creating a switch where it's deleting those other branches to save the primitive count. Because the leaves themselves aren't that heavy, it's actually more the branches and we can change stuff like the resolution of this later as well, which we will be. And this switch will be driven by a parameter up here. So let's go back in to that switch. We'll just leave it for now. And let's set up one more thing here. So we'll switch and just create a null so that and shift R to switch the positions here. So with this set, we see leaves, 
but with it set to zero, no leaves. So I'll create a parameter basically just for turning the leaves on and off. 